When you're studying infinite series as a tool to solve problems, it's very useful to be able to solve or to determine when series converge and when they diverge. Um, the main context is that you've got some function that you have written as a Taylor series and um, you want to know if that Taylor series actually converges to your function at the values that you're interested in. So in the piece of the domain that you're studying for the problem that you're looking at. And for some functions um, you'll find that the Taylor series does converge to the function. Actually it, it may do it for all values of x in the domain and then for others it will work for some values of x and not other values of x. So it's really nice to be able to say when exactly this series will converge and when it won't. Um, I want to look at the example natural log of x. If I take the Taylor series of natural log of x centered at x equals 0, so I go through the derivatives, I plug in x equals 0, this is the series that I get. And if I use this to look at the natural log of 2, for example, that means I'm plugging in 2 for x. Um, I want to know if this converges or diverges. So I plug in 2. I start at n equals 1, I get a plus 1 over 1, and then for the second term I get a minus 1 over 2, and then a plus 1 over 3, and so on. This is called the alternating harmonic series. Um, if you start looking at these partial sums, so just look at summing up the first two, and then the first three, and then the first four, and so on. It's pretty obvious that uh, that sequence of partial sums is converging to a finite number. And if you, if you type in natural log of two into a calculator or a computer, uh, you'll see that these approximations are getting closer and closer to that number. It makes sense because when you add these numbers, um, it's never bigger than one, and it's never smaller than one half, and then as you keep adding and subtracting, you're converging in on this value. So I haven't proved it, but this converges to natural log of two. Now, what happens if I look at natural log of three? If I plug in three for x, then for the first term, I get a positive two over one. For the second term, I get a minus 2 squared over 2. For the third term, I get a plus 2 cubed over 3. And then this pattern keeps up. So minus 2 to the 4th over 4, plus 2 to the 5th over 5, and so on. So now we have to ask ourselves, is this going to converge to natural log of 3 or is it not going to converge? And you can start adding this up piece by piece and see if those approximations are getting closer to natural log of 3. Um, but if we just look at this and think about it, I'm going to compare the numerators to the denominators. So in the denominator, this is growing very slowly, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In the top, I've got 4, 8, 16, 32. It's doubling each time. So obviously the numerator is growing way faster than the denominator. And if I keep adding terms forever, adding and subtracting terms forever, whose absolute value is growing, then um, I can't converge to any finite number. So if you think about what these... I don't know. I think it's helpful to think about these partial sums. So let's write these down real quick. The first partial sum would just be 2. And then the second partial sum would be 2 minus 2. So that's 0. The third one would be 0 plus 8 thirds. So that's 8 thirds. The fourth one would be 8 thirds minus 16 fourths, so minus 4. 
So that would be minus 12 thirds. That gives me a minus 4 thirds overall. And then S5 would take that and add 32 fifths. Um, I'm just going to write that as 32 over 5 minus 4 thirds and so on. And so what I want to point out here is that you have this um, this alternating pattern where you've got positive zero, positive negative, positive, and notice that this eight thirds is bigger than two. This is like two point six seven. Um, so. Even though you're, you're adding and then subtracting and adding and subtracting, the combination of those numbers is not converging to a finite number. These, uh, the absolute value of these sums is kind of going wild. I believe this will just keep growing and growing, uh, these odd numbered partial sums. And we may see the same pattern for the even numbered partial sums. They may keep growing in absolute value as well. It turns out that there's a quick test for saying that something like this will diverge. So this is, uh, if we write it in this form, in the summation notation, it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, and then I plug in 3 for x, I get 2 to the n over n. If these terms Oh, I left out the minus 1 to the n plus 1, so let me put that back in. So if the, the terms with the negative included, um, if the entire term, if that sequence does not go to 0, then this cannot possibly converge. Um, there's a nice slick proof to show you why, but I'm not going to take the several minutes that it would take to show you that. I think intuitively it makes sense if you're adding infinitely many numbers together um, and those numbers aren't shrinking down to zero, then you're not going to get a finite answer for that, that infinite sum. So, uh, what I want to do is be able to take the limit of just this sequence of numbers. And of course what we would see if we did that here is that 2 to the n is growing faster than n, so this whole thing is not shrinking down to zero in the limit. That's exactly what we observed here. So this diverges. It is not equal to natural log of 3. Um, this test is a nice test to be able to run quickly for things like this. For the same reason, this isn't going to work for any larger values of x either. So um, this test is nice. This test is referred to as the divergence test. And what it says is that if you have a general series sum of ak. It doesn't matter where you start. You start at some finite number, let it go to infinity. So we've got an infinite series. In that context, if you look at the limit as k goes to infinity of those terms, if that limit is not zero, then this series cannot possibly be convergent. So if this is the case, I guess I'll write it like this. If the limit of the terms is not zero, then the series is divergent. Instead of writing is divergent in words, I'm going to say, I'm going to write the symbols equals infinity. Um, the name of this is the divergence theorem, 
and uh, I'm sorry, not the divergence theorem, the divergence test. And there are a lot of other tests that you can use. Some of them are more powerful than this one. But this is, this is kind of like the fastest technique that you can use to solve, uh, to figure out that certain series don't, don't converge. So like for your techniques for antiderivatives, U substitution is kind of like your easy go-to. If, if you happen to see an antiderivative that could use a U substitution, you jump to that one first because it's, kind of, it's one of your most simple techniques. The divergence test is going to be one of your most simple tests, so if you can use it, um, it's always good to jump to that quickly.